So I was pretty much well, born on stage. I was on stage as a child in school. Then in college, I got picked up by a crazy woman in a nightclub and planned up doing musicals for many, many, many years with her and with the Alec Padamsis and the rival camp, Pearl Padamsis and the other rival camp. <laughs> and from there, I moved on to more serious theater and got into Shakespeare with even the likes of Hema Devi and it was quite a treat. And so I was really fortunate to learn from all these fantastic, uh, you know, strongholds, I would say, of theater. Uh, no formal training, but yeah, always out on the boards, ready to do anything on stage. Uh, since the arts does not really support the artists, unless you're doing poly sholly shit. Sorry, I didn't say that. Uh, and <laughs> but it doesn't support us. So I also teach. I teach English to weaker students. I teach English to the more senior managers so they can go up and get business into the country. So polish their business English. I also teach yoga because as a dancer, I think the thing that saved my body from being completely destroyed was the yoga. I was lucky to have done classical ballet, all the Indian art forms, dance forms, as well as one of my dreams came true was being in the Martha Graham School in New York for a couple of months. And so that's me in a, not such a small nutshell. I think it's very exciting to work in a homegrown play. It's like a very rare treat to have someone write a play and more so that someone I know and really respect, appreciate and love very dearly, Mayor Pesanji. I think she's very fortunate to have her around in my, first in my hood, back in my neighborhood, now a little further away. She takes up topics that are very relevant to society because people don't want to talk about certain things. Like so about crows, about Parsis feeding crows. There was an earlier one I'd done with her. But this is dealing with people and like in wheelchairs. And I mean, it's only recently that our pavements have warped slopes, which I mean, if someone's in a wheelchair, he'll probably break his head again on it. But they're trying, you know. So that's what's exciting about it, that it's for a cause and a very valid cause. And it's very well written. It deals with, it's got a lot of these Parsi things in it, which is quite funny. Might not, might not always click with the side colloquial. But it's an insight not only into a Parsi family, but also a wheelchair person. So Narayan hardly says anything and uh, I have a lot of people who have a lot of domestic help who are very sort of uh, part of the family, yet there's a social distance. So playing him, I get to use all their inputs. I mean, not inputs, but I've seen over the years and it sometimes really upsets me the way people treat their domestic help. They say they're family, but they treat them differently and not very nicely. So it's interesting to put that in. And Mr. Mathur, I love his character too because he's the kind of instigator. And he sort of is the game changer for the family and is like instigates them to like get them out and move out and do something and get into real life and you know, the mainstream and not just sit there and mope and you know, rope yourself in the corner saying, oh, oh. So quietly, like probably be squint eyed by the end of it because from one eye I watch it like, where is there? Should I feed him this way? Should I feed him that way? I practice feeding him this way, but he's looking there and the cup is over there. So like, where do I put my cup? So things like that, uh, <laughs> positioning. And Zoom's wonderful because occasionally it just decides to change the sort of the face size or the head size. You're suddenly like, you're like this and then suddenly you're flipped around. You're like, hey, I didn't do nothing, you know? So, that, <laughs> and the lag, at least, you know, you count one, two, three and go. So you can figure those things out. It's very exciting, but to have people sitting in Calcutta, Chennai, Bangalore, Kerala and Bombay and be still working and not have to worry about rehearsal space. And, you know, where are we going to meet? What time are we going to meet? We just log in and we're there. So it's quite a blessing. I'd, I'd like people to treat everyone equally, whether they're in a wheelchair or walking stick or stilts or, you know, with the false leg or because it's still very, I mean, I have people, I have a friend, I mean, I have a lot of friends in wheelchairs and I'll, again, probably 
ramble a little, but it's really, it's a funny incident, but it really was not very pleasant. I have a friend who has been in a wheelchair, travels the world alone. I met him at a party in Goa, jumping in a wheelchair. And I'm like, hmm. And even take my slope up and push. I'm like, what? So I pushed him down a little sand dune. <laughs> and he wanted to, to go wee down. And we were in Bombay at Gateway of India watching the sunrise after partying all night. And this man comes up trying to make conversation with us and goes like, Hello, good morning. Are you in the wheelchair? And I just went, what the F, you know? I went, no, this is his Formula One. And I think you want to run along and <laughs> I didn't want to tell you what I told him after that. <laughs> but this was an opening line for someone who was like, you know, what? But WTF, you know, like, go away. Was... So you don't talk down to people like that. You know, I know he must have meant well to have a conversation of just curiosity. But hey, on the other hand, I had friends from a nightclub who, at that time, there were no ramps, but they created a plank of ramp for him to come on into the nightclub from, you know, one level to another level and everywhere on the dance floor as well. I have another friend who, again, is sort of one of these challengers and she stands for the wheel. She's in a wheelchair and she sees that everything is wheelchair access, including taxis. And I think we need more wheelchair access. And a lot of the slopes and even the fancy hotels are a little too steep. It's only if you're with a wheelchair person, do you realize how difficult it is? In fact, even one of the hospital slopes was so steep that, I mean, I was like really pushed backwards when I'm going down, you know? So it has to be leveled, you know, it has to be sensible. And yeah, people have to treat them like just normal people and not reach out to help them when they don't need help. That's what I learned from Greg. He'd do three steps and needed help on the fourth step. So I'd wait till he did his three steps and push the fourth step up. Otherwise, they're so overly anxious to help them and they don't always want that help. They want to do things on their own. And God helps those who help themselves. So yeah.